Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. Thanks for joining me. We've gone back to the round pen. Remember several weeks ago we decided to do this to, to make sure that we are established in, in our faith, that, that we know the, the basics of Christianity. So first of all, we talked about the Word of God. It is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God to you and I. It's a love letter to you directly from Him. And then we talked about the person of God. Then we talked about the person of Jesus. And then we talked about the person of the Holy Spirit. And then last week we talked about sin. Now this week we're going to talk about judgment. If you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we study the word, we need to rightly divide the word of truth. We need to know what is truth and what's not. In other words, you can't go into the Bible and just take out little bits and pieces and try and make it work for your circumstances. No, you need to know who wrote it. You need to know who they wrote it to. You need to know the circumstances behind what was going on at the time so that we can know the truth and it's not something that's made up. Amen? That's very essential when we're talking about the judgments because uh, a lot of people want to take all the judgments and kind of lump them together as a general, uh, a general judgment. But the general judgment theory is the invention of religion and is not taught in the Word of God. There are five separate judgment, judgments. Today we're going to do one. We're going to do one each day. But there's five separate ones and it's revealed in the Bible. And they differ as to time, place, and purpose. Yet all of them have one thing in common, and that is Jesus Christ is the judge. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 22, it says that the Father has committed all judgment to the Son. Okay, so let's take a look at this first judgment, the judgment of the believer's sins. John chapter 5 verse 24 says this, Most assuredly I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Good news, guys. We don't have to come again into judgment. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. As a matter of fact, he paid the penalty, and on the grounds of his substitutional death, the believer is separated from his sins forever. Look at Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Now, if you're on this globe, on this earth, and you start heading north, eventually you're going to head south. But if you start heading east, you'll never reach west. You'll just keep going uh, east, right? That's what it says. He has cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Well, you just keep going. Amen? That's our God. That's what he's done with our sin. The sins of the believer have been blotted out and... Um, God has promised that he will not remember your sins. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Uh, look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It says, For Christ also, su also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Our Lord and Savior... Jesus suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust. Amen. The believer will never be condemned with the world because Christ was condemned in our place. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, For he, God, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, um, and, and, and therefore he took on all of our sin. Christ was made a curse for us on the cross and has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That comes from Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. He has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That comes from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26. If you look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, it says the believer will not come into judgment because his sins have been purged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is good news. Again, this is the judgment for the believer's sins. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of that for all of us. Amen. We're going to pick this up again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.